Hi, everyone. It's Matt from the Pen Habit blog. And uh, once again, glad to be back doing another video here with you. Today's video, we're going to be doing a review of this pen. This is the Edison. Had a had a brain freeze there. This is an Edison Beaumont. I got this from Goulet Pen Company. Uh, this is the one of their standard production pens. Onyx Flake, I believe, is the acrylic it's made from. Uh, this is probably the first expensive, expensive pen I bought. Uh, expensive is a relative term. This is the first pen over $100 I ever bought. Uh, there's a lot I like about it. There are a few things I'm not real crazy about. Uh, this is one of those pens that, I, if you watched my last video about the Waterman's Ideal Number no. 7, this is one of those pens that I like but it just doesn't speak to me. So I'll talk a little bit about why that is, what I like about the pen, and why it doesn't speak to me in certain ways for other things. So let's uh, do a quick little overview here. It's a very, very pretty acrylic. I like this acrylic a lot. It's got a lot of depth to it, a lot more than you can see probably in the video or in, uh, in the pictures online. Uh, right here it says Edison Pen Company Beaumont. And uh, I like the silver fittings, the band and the cap here. It's got a black uh, top to the cap and a black cap on the bottom of the barrel. Uh, one of the things I really noticed about the Edison pens that I've not been really familiar with in the past, uh, this being my first Edison pen, was the craftsmanship with which they're made. They're really made quite well. And, and even though this pen is not one of my favorites, I am often quite impressed by the way it looks or the way it uh, the way it fits together in particular. You notice it when you uh, when you get the threads together and the way the threads are were machined, uh, it, it sounds dorky, but you can tell it's well made by the way that the pen uh, twists together. it's it's really quite nice. Uh, on the inside, we've got a standard Edison nib. This one is in medium. It's a steel nib. And let me just clean off some of the extra ink here. Uh, by Yovo, um, this is. Yeah, I've always liked Edison's logo there on the nib. It's it's quite nice, and uh, you know their their nibs are nice. They've got uh, very well made feeds. Nice section. This is a cartridge converter pen, and again, the threads on between the feed and the uh, the barrel are are quite nice. And, and it uses standard international cartridge or standard international converters. So uh, there's nothing particularly flashy or, or exciting or this is going to sound awful. There's nothing terribly unique about this pen other than it's a modern pen made really quite well. And, and I love what Brian Gray, who's the owner of the Edison Pen Company, uh, has done for the fountain pen community. He's really revitalized, done a lot to help revitalize the community in the last several years. And uh, I, I've never owned one of his custom pens. It's on my to-do list. Um, but I'd really like to go in and get a custom pen made from him. I actually did the measurements and wrote them down ahead of time this time. The uh, the pen is 127 millimeters when capped and 125 millimeters when uncapped. It is 145 millimeters long when it's posted. And this is a very, very light pen. This is only 16 grams, and that's with it being fully inked and the converter in the pen. I didn't measure it without that. 16 grams is nothing for a pen. This is a very, very light pen. So if you like light pens, uh, this is going to be one for you. That's actually one of the reasons I don't love this pen. It's too light for me. I like my pens to have a little bit more heft. Now, um, I wanted to do a little bit of comparison because this is the main reason why this pen just doesn't really speak to me. So this is my Waterman's Ideal 7. This is my Conway Stewart. Wellington. You can see they're about the same height. And this is my Mont Blanc 149. And these are fairly, these are, are pens that are real high in my the list of pens that I like. This is the, uh, this is the Beaumont. And I'll, I'll move them down here so you can see the difference. Let's zoom out just a little bit here. Uh, come back. So this is this is the difference in length between them. And you can see the Beaumont is just much, much smaller 
uh, in width. And this is, I didn't, this was, you know, only my third pen that I'd ever purchased. So I had no sense of, of size or, you know, none of that made sense to me. I bought this because I liked the acrylic. That was the main reason. And I liked the shape of the pen, but it was just too small. Um, this is one of those pens where I, I don't really like writing with it uncapped or unposted. It's possible to do, but it's not really my favorite. I much prefer to post this pen. Uh, the other thing that I had a little bit of an issue with was this pen, the nib and the ink flow on this pen didn't really, uh, it wasn't what I was looking for. I like my pens to write really quite on the wet side, and this wasn't. This was tended to be a little, oh, excuse me, don't want to drop my pens. This tended to be a little bit dry here uh, for me, and the nib didn't really just, I don't know, it, the, I never got the sense of the nib just kind of floating over the paper like I do with some of my other pens. It, it gave, it wasn't scratchy. Uh, it just didn't, it, it gave me a little bit more feedback than I generally like. So if you like a pen with with some feedback, I think, and it may just be my nib in this case, but this one, uh, this one just didn't, didn't meet exactly what I was looking for. Now I have made a few adjustments to this nib to increase the ink flow just a little bit, and uh, the ink channel was a little narrow, so I, I widened that very slightly. I flossed the nib and and uh, took care of that. But I want to do some quick writing samples here and kind of show you what the pen is all about. So here we go. So as mentioned, this is the Edison Beaumont in the Onyx Flake acrylic. And this is a steel medium nib. And I believe that uh, Brian Gray has his nibs made by Yovo. Um, as does Brian Goulet, I believe. I believe both of these are, are Yovo nibs, as are the nibs in Twisby pens. So this is a standard number six nib. Um, so it can be replaced. You can, and to have a, a nib that large on a pen this small is pretty uncommon. Normally on smaller pens, they use a smaller nib, but to have a full-sized, full-sized number six nib uh, on such a small pen is actually, it's kind of cool. Uh, the ink that I am using is... Karandash Saffron. And this is one of those inks. It's been discontinued. Uh, I got this ink at the University Bookstore here in Seattle, at the University of Washington Bookstore. I basically, when, when I found out that the Karandash inks, the Colors of the Earth series had been discontinued, I went and bought everything, even if it was an ink I wasn't interested in. So I, uh, I have one bottle of this Saffron, and I actually like it quite a bit. It's my favorite orange that I have. I don't use a lot of orange inks though. So anyway, and as always, the paper is Rhodia 80 gram. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a quote here. You'll notice it writes very smoothly. Um, with the small adjustments, it it writes. Um, it's not terribly wet. It's it's still one of the drier pens that I have, um, but it it writes quite nicely. There's not much give to the nib. That's not to be surprising. These steel nibs don't have a whole lot of give, um, particularly if you're used to using a flex pen like I talked about in my last video. But you know, they, they have a little bit, a tiny bit of give. You have to push pretty hard to get it. Um, I don't find that with this pen, this pen doesn't work well if I'm using a really heavily shaded ink like uh, Apache, Noodler's Apache Sunset. That was actually the very first ink I put in this pen, and it didn't really work out all that well. However, um, if you just want to use a kind of a standard ink where shading isn't a big deal or you're using darker inks, I find this works really well. This pen also, one, one area where this pen works well is if you're using uh, 
cheap paper. Because it doesn't gush out ink and you don't get a lot of pooling and puddling with this pen, um, I found that this one works pretty well for me on cheaper paper when I don't have access to Rhodey or Clairefontaine or Apica or whatever it is I'm using at the moment. A um, little bit of upside down writing. It does write upside down, very fine lines. And this is actually one of the smoother upside down writers that I have in my collection. I don't ever write upside down except when I'm doing these reviews, but at least there, there you go. So this is the Beaumont from Edison Pen Company. Like I said, it's a nice pen. I love the material it's made out of. It's just not the right pen for me. It's a little too small. If you've got smaller hands, I've got quite long fingers. I play the piano and, you know, have long fingers. Um, so if you have smaller hands or shorter fingers, this might be the perfect pen for you, especially if you're looking for, for a good everyday writer. This is one that I, it's never clogged on me. It's never given me any problems, but it's also, it's not one of those really special pens in my collection for me. So that is the Beaumont. I've said all I can say about it. Uh, it's a nice pen and I do plan on buying more from, from Edison Pen Company in the future. I am interested in getting one of the custom-made pens, uh, probably the Huron or the Collier, one of the, Huron? I think that's what it's called, or the Collier, one of the larger pens, um, and perhaps something that's maybe a little bit heavier, because um, I do like a heavier pen. And I would really like to try some of their their um, flex nibs that I know Brian Gray and Richard Binder have worked together to get some Binderized flex nibs into the store that you can have included in the pen when you buy it. So I'd, I'd like to try that. That's probably one of my future pen purchases. Um, and the dryness I had on this, I'm going to say is probably not typical of what you're going to get. Um, I have other Edison nibs. I've bought Edison nibs to put in other pens and they've been worked beautifully. Um, this is, this is just a little drier than I normally like. And I don't know if that's a combination of this particular nib or, this feed, uh, you know, I've, I've done the things to, and it, it's fine now. It's not bad. It's just now it's a little too small for the way I like my pens. So nice pen writes beautifully, beautifully constructed. I don't, I can't speak for every version, but this version was a little dry for me and it's too small for my hand. So hope you've enjoyed this video and we will see you here next time on the pen habit. Thanks for watching.